Okay, everyone, this is another episode of On the Rest from Off the Cuff. Today, we have another great collaboration from Belmont Watches. Proudly bringing to you this wonderful Omega Planet Ocean 39. Um, and for those of you that are already saying, oh man, it's so illegible. Guys, it's reflecting off of a dark lens in a dark room. So yes, it's just, just to show you guys, you can see, you're going to be able to see the reflections. That's just a... So it's the way it's filmed, guys. So out in the real world, outside of the studio, you're absolutely going to be able to see the 12, 6, and 9. So don't worry. Now, a little bit of the brand. Omega was founded back in 1848. They're Swiss made. They're part of the Swatch Group's luxury tier. And although uh, Omega and Tissot merging was kind of a precursor to what eventually became known as the Swatch Group, um... Uh, so it's one of those things that you kind of don't have to worry as much about it's a brand that's part of the swatch group so maybe it's just not what it used to be or you know it's just kind of a, it's a name revival and, and you know doesn't tie back to its lineage I would say that is a, a place where both uh, Tissot and Omega kind of sit in a higher uh, tier uh, regardless of where they're marketed at because they did help kind of band together and create what became uh, you know the huge conglomerate known as the Swatch Group so um, their history is a touch more pure than other brands within the group you know that might have been more rescued from the quartz crisis like Longines, Mido, or Certina which are also great brands um, but you know I think those if you're really gonna worry about Swatch Group quote unquote um, kind of uh, washing things out uh, and, and and watering down, um, you know, their offerings. Uh, maybe you have more of a case for a brand that isn't Omega or Tissot. So with that said, this is a dive watch. Some key common characteristics when you're looking for a diver is, of course, water resistance. Typically, for some type of screw down crown, you're going to want something that's tough, legible with a dive time bezel and a diver's extension is always nice if on bracelet. This is the Seamaster Planet Ocean 39 and a half millimeter. Uh, it has a very long nomenclature. Uh, 215.30.40.20.01.001 and the line was originally launched back in 2005 combining design language that honors Omega's dive watch legacy with their latest technologies. These new go for uh, $6,550 MSRP or you could get this particular one for $4,850 from Belmont Watches so quite a deal. Um, and I'm definitely happy to uh, get into it with you guys. So with all that long intro said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. All right, guys. So very, very nice piece. Get it to focus there. And you know what? I can already use the light. All right. Maybe try to find that nice sweet spot of getting it close. Uh, without getting too many reflections there. So, oh yeah, big difference. Okay guys, so check this out. This is uh, listed as a 39 and a half, but that's, uh, that's pretty much, I think the bezel measurement or the way that they just want to market it because I get 38.9 across the bezel and actually 40 and a half at the case. Yes guys, this is a, everybody's, oh I wish they make it in a 40. This is a 40, this is a 40 and a half right here. So stop being so obsessed with the numbers that you don't even measure or, or really care about. Like, come on. So the thickness on here is actually 14.3 millimeters thick, which, you know, is, is a bit hefty, but again, this is a planet ocean, so it has 600 meters of water resistance. Got the manual helium escape valve going for you. So this is, uh, you know, this is not meant to be some slim felt trim model. They have other Seamasters for that. This is not it. The lug to lug uh, is only 45.1. So that's probably another one of the reasons why they mo uh, why they market this as very small because you actually shrink this down a lot by having a smaller lug to lug. So even though it's a 40, it's going to wear a little bit smaller than a 40 for two reasons. One, it's a little bit taller than most 40 millimeter divers. And number two, it has a shorter lug to lug than most 40 millimeter divers as well. And the fact that it has female end links means that you're not going to be extending that out by any 
means. So you're really getting, uh, you know, the the all of the trickery essentially to make a watch wear smaller. So they market it as a smaller dive watch. Um, as far as how it, you're gonna enjoy it, I'll say that for me, guys, when I first got this uh, in hand, it read as small. It, it, it didn't read as full size, it read as undersized. But on the wrist, honestly, my eyes adjusted eventually and whatnot. I didn't get too much wrist time because I actually have too, a bit too big of a wrist for this one. It, they do have the links, so if you have bigger than seven and a half inch wrist, you'll be fine. Um, just I didn't get the links because the links are with the box and papers and all the nice the niceties um, that go with whoever um, buys this piece. But let me just pull it back down a little farther away and let you guys see how the light plays with it. Very glossy, very reflective. So this thing looks expensive. It, it's beautiful. Uh, those signature bevels there are fantastic. What really impressed me was the the fine brushing on the sides here. The hairline brushing. Let me see if popping the light on my, oh, actually, let's do two things. I'm gonna give it a quick wipe, bring it back in, hit the light, there we go. Look at that brushing, guys. Look at the polishing, I mean, that's impressive, but look at the brushing there. That hairline brushing is just glorious. The case work, really, really quite immaculate. And this is a well, loved watch this is used this isn't you know new old stock or anything like that so it's been worn and you can see guys look at that very very nice glad i invested in some extra lighting sources uh so check it out i really dig this piece it has a beautifully done double domed sapphire uh, which means it's domed on the outside and the underside so it's gonna uh you know, be ultimately legible even at very, very harsh angles. You can, you know, you're not going to get a ton of distortion just washing everything out. So, very, very cool and definitely pays a big, big plus when you're underwater, which not everybody will be with one of these, but hey, it's there for you if you need it. <laughs> so, um, the bezel action on here is very nice 120 clicks. It, it's as nice as you would expect from an Omega. It's a nice balance of smooth and clicky. Um, and you can see here, you also are getting those, um, another, this thing is just so glossy and nice. I, I want to keep it smudge free. Um, but you can see also uh, the nice liquid metal uh, filling in that ceramic bezel insert. So instead of it being carved out and, and you know, filled with paint or loom, uh, it's basically completely flush because it has metal kind of infused into the markings on that bezel insert. So very beautiful, very, very nice. Uh, so really well executed in terms of just feeling very cohesive, feeling very refined. So I can absolutely appreciate that. You do have this manual helium escape valve at the 10 o'clock. You have your regular screw down signed crown at the three o'clock. Um, and then you see it kind of has this cool asymmetrical case where you have uh, essentially the, uh, the crown guards kind of built in. So it's kind of nested in there, but still easy to get to and a nice size in terms of actuating. And guys, the winding action on this is is beautiful. It's it's just like you'd expect from an expensive watch. So uh, super smooth, uh, you know, like you would get from an Omega or a Grand Seiko or, or anything luxury tier uh, outside of kind of your basic Salidas and, and all that stuff where it can be a little bit gritty and not in a bad way, I don't think. I mean, I'm kind of used to that, that level um, <laughs> of winding. But uh, this is definitely, you know, an experience. So uh, definitely, if you're into that, you will enjoy that. Now, although you can't, see, oh, you actually can, I forgot. This has a see-through case back. So that's another opportunity for me to get some extra light on it. So check this out, guys. Beautiful movement there. This is the Omega 
automatic 8800 caliber. So it's a master chronometer, which means it's zero to plus six seconds a day certified. Uh, so that is extremely high and tight tolerance there for a very handsome and modern movement. Um, one drawback as part of uh, you know one of these movements or just this brand in general is that you are getting a slightly choppier seconds sweep because um, it's not going to be four hertz. It's going to be three and a half hertz. Uh, basically, instead of 28.8 vibrations per hour, it's going to be 25200 vibrations per hour. You're still getting a 55 hour power reserve, which is extended over your kind of basic, you know, uh, 40 hour ETA Salida kind of uh, option. So 55, not bad. It's also very anti magnetic at up to 15,000 uh, Gauss. And uh, it's it's nice, guys. And then getting back into the dial while we're here, while we're here, maybe hit it with the light again. So while we get into this glorious dial here, let's check it out. It's that beautiful black glossy ceramic. It has applied indices, color match date wheel at the three o'clock. So I think it uh, fits nicely. It doesn't stick out like a sore thumb or anything like that. And then uh, you do have some two-tone loom, so you're gonna get green at the bezel pip and the minute hand, and then blue everywhere else. And then of course you're getting 600 meters of water resistance, which is fantastic, or 2,000 feet or 60 bar. Uh, the lugs on here, unfortunately, are 19 millimeters, uh, but honestly, in this day and age, it's, it's easy to get stuff in that 19 millimeter range if you really want it. Uh, plus there's all of the uh, factory Omega options as well. So not bad at all. Um, now the everything is solid, of course, solid links, solid end links, screw in connectors. Um, you're getting a milled clasp, but with this nice kind of push button, you can see adjustment there for micro adjust. So if you're hot, whatnot, it'll fit nicely. Um, I won't do like a full on wrist uh, thing because it's I could barely slide it over my my meat hooks here as you can see uh, maybe I should have done a, a cutaway so that you guys don't get stuck if I get stuck uh, but as you can see I'm not even gonna close the clasp wears really nicely even on my seven and a quarter just like that doesn't look undersized again in the box it looked a little undersized like just looking at the dial to bezel ratio uh, it seemed a little bit small um, but you know what on the wrist I think it looks just fine it is a little bit tall which makes it feel you know a little bit smaller because it's it's drawing that visual weight up um, which is shrinking it out a little bit if this was thinner I think of course it would wear and they would probably market it more like a 40 millimeter watch because it, it is <laughs> right um, so it's a great looking piece guys one of the things i really enjoy about the planet ocean is that it really looks like some of my favorite seamaster models and it's probably the reason unfortunately why they they won't really or at least not yet they haven't reissued those models because you know what they uh they would just look like a baby planet ocean instead of looking like a really cool heritage seamaster 300 um but really really beautiful guys um i'm digging this one and you know belmont watches every time i borrow something from these guys they make me want more so with that said let's actually uh, get it off the wrist get it uh set up for some loom shots low light transition and closing thoughts all right we'll go ahead and hit the lights here all right it's a diver guys and man, it's loomed like one. It stands out, it's it's bright, it's beautiful, it's blue, and it's even green too. And uh, as you can see, very nice legibility. I would say, um, you know, 12 o'clock orientation. Um, not quite as good as uh, while it's lit up because you can't see the big number 12 there. But one thing I like to do is work in some low light transitions because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to be coming in and out of building, you know, walking underneath the overhangs, shade of a tree, maybe spending time in your favorite automobile. So it's nice to see 
what these watches render like in less than optimal lighting to include maybe some harsh lighting, which yes, you can see the love that this watch has gone through. And a nice thing is you don't have to worry about scarring it up that first drop because somebody else already went through um, wearing this one in and giving it some desk diving marks of glory. So very nice, but you can see guys, very legible. And that, that dial is insanely black, especially for one that's reflective the way that it is. I mean, I think it has to do probably with that crystal and the anti-reflective coating as well. But man, does that thing render black. That is a black dial. That is dark and deep and uh, very nicely done. You can see all of the little textures and, and 3D nature of that text on the dial that just pops that little orange. Nice play there. So really handsome piece, guys. I dig this one. I do wish that they I would have got it with a couple extra links so I could have wore it a little bit more and gave you better, uh, more detailed impressions uh, in terms of how it wears. But, you know, closing thoughts, guys. On the wrist, very solid and substantial feeling. Uh, the hairline brushing is super impressive, like you guys saw. Smaller diameter with shorter lug-to-lug -lug do make for a compact wear without it feeling undersized. I'd say visually it can look undersized, but I think it didn't feel undersized at all uh, because, yeah, again, at the end of the day, it actually is a 40. <laughs> it's 40 and a half. Um... I mean, that's a weird measurement, of course, because it has an asymmetrical case. Um, so, it, you know, it doesn't have, uh, it's not like I could measure it without the crown guards because the crown guards are kind of extra meat on that metal. <laughs> but yeah, it wears really nice, guys. Um, I think you get that dialed in case with the really dialed in bracelets and then the class proportions. It just helps it feel really well balanced. I mean, you're not going to get... Um, you know, a bunch of handsome taper or anything like that from this piece. It's definitely just a very tool watch, um, and it's very good at that. You know, let me give it a little light play so you can get a little bit more reflection. So for those of you that are looking at this saying, oh my gosh, it's an illegible watch. Uh, well, I'm sorry, guys. It's anything reflective in this, and recording it in this little makeshift studio of mine, it, it, there's going to be a lot of darkness for it to reflect off of. So I'm going to leave that on. Um, model variants, there's also a blue dial and white dial option um, at this particular size. And then, um, you know, and there's some crazy ones too with like diamonds and stuff like that. But, you know, not really my demographic. Uh, but if you're looking for something like that, you totally have that available for you thanks to Omega. Um, and then of course, outside of this particular size range, there's a ton more of options in larger sizes. Um, so in terms of comparable models, you know, I'd say this sits somewhere between the Tudor Pelagos and the Rolex Sub as a tech heavy but classic daily driver. Like it's, yes, it's, it's you know, has that classic look to it um, that does dress up pretty nicely. Um, it's a little bit thick, so like I wouldn't want to put underneath a, a cuff or collar, but it would honestly look great. Um, it looked great on James Bond. Uh, he wore a much larger size and I think uh, given the choice, I might, be more liking probably the the 43 millimeter size especially considering how these are measured and i'm you know i imagine that across the bezel that 42 or 43 is going to be closer to a to a 40 versus this where the bezel is actually uh closer to a 39 at 38.9 so again there's some trickery in there guys some tomfoolery that's happening um that just is a lot of marketing stuff so if you can get to an omega boutique try them on um, this one didn't wear bad at all. Uh, I think at the smaller size, it definitely gives it more of a kind of a vintage flair, which I like because the aesthetic of this is, you know, it again, it ties back to the Seamasters that I really like. Uh, so for me, guys, the bottom line is while it may appear slightly undersized at first glance, I think your eyes will easily adjust to appreciate all of the good that's wrapped into this very small package. I shouldn't say very small, but reasonably small package <laughs> okay that came out really wrong uh just phrasing so many issues <laughs> but if you like the video please do like and if you haven't already please subscribe for more content just like this another big shout out to belmont watches thanks guys